So let's think about the reaction between, say, a Grignard and an aldehyde. First of all, we have to find who's going to be the electrophilic atom. So who's going to be the electrophile here? That's something we were already kind of talking about up here. Who's the electrophile? It would be the aldehyde. The carbonyl carbon? Right. That's right. By the way, a good name for this is the carbonyl carbon because it has that delta positive. That means this would be at the head of an arrow. Electrophiles are at the heads of arrows. Now we have to find the nucleophile. Well, where's the nucleophile? Do you know what the nucleophile is when you're using the grignard? It would be the carbon next to the magnesium. That's right. And in fact, you're, what your instructor likes to do, like many instructors, they like to turn this into an ionic bond. Mm -hmm. So we should turn this into an ionic bond. Now the big mistake to watch out for is remember there's no carbon here. Mm -hmm. This is the carbon. So the best thing to do is to erase the covalent bond and then we can rewrite that as an ionic bond. That way we haven't changed the number of carbon. So anytime you're dealing with good neurons, this is how your instructor likes you to deal with that. This is a good approach. And now this would be the electron pushing arrow. Now we can't forget that we have to make room for this by pushing up this pi bond. Right. Now let's draw the product of that step, the intermediate from that step. Are you using pencil? Pencil pen. Oh no, if you have a pencil with you, that would be better. I don't. I always bring extra pencils because I hate pens, so I can give you a lot. Oh, thank you. Because there is some possibility that we'll be making some mistakes. Let's use our asterisking trick to show who used to be the carbonyl carbon and the carbonyl oxygen. When you're drawing a complicated product, it's always helpful to put in numbers. Our carbonyl carbon here now should be attached to the number one carbon, and that's attached to the number two and the number three. And I think you got this right. You got the right number of carbons in here. And we also have this hydrogen here. This is a hidden hydrogen, though, so some people might draw it and some people might not draw it. This hydrogen is not too important. What is important, something I think might have gotten left out of your picture, is the charges. The charges are the most important part of any picture. Well, whoever's at the initial tail should be becoming less negative. So this negative went away. But who's at the final head? Well, this is the final head in our sequence of arrows. So this oxygen must have picked up a negative charge. The charge is really the most important part of the whole picture, so it's always important to put that in. And that'll give us this product here. Now, if, the, if these were the only reagents that we had added, then we would be done. If these were the only reagents that we had added, then this would be the final product. Mm -hmm. However, this is probably not the product we wanted to make. Probably what we wanted to make was an alcohol. So usually now people would now add something to put a proton on here. Do you know what people usually add after the Grignard? H3O plus. That's right, so probably now we should add H3O plus, and then we should show the product or the mechanism that, it'll give, uh, that we'll get next. I went ahead and showed the mechanism of how the hydronium protonates this oxygen here. This is pretty much what you had down. You didn't write down the mechanism, but you got the right product, so that's good. Okay, and this is an example of a 
category one type reaction. We should be able to see how this fits into this pattern over here. Mm -hmm. The nucleophile here was this carb anion. The nucleophile was this carbon, and it ended up attached to the carbonyl carbon. So here's the nucleophile in the position of this number one carbon over here. By the way, then, here's a, a way that I think is a good way to draw this. It's a good idea to try to, to, to show what this is like. I like to actually notice, put the nucleophile and the carbonyl oxygen kind of pointing in the same direction. So you can show how the nucleophile has displaced one of the pi bonds from the oxygen. So I put the nucleophile up here so that I can kind of keep these two groups in the same place. So it's easier to see the change that happens. So I've kept these two groups in the same place and I put the nucleophile up here. All right. This is actually a reaction that you first saw last semester, but it's important to review that now, this reaction on aldehydes and ketones. This is useful if you need to make new carbon-carbon bonds. This is a good way to add new carbon-carbon bonds. That's our category one reaction. By the way, this is not reversible. We're going to see a lot of reactions that are reversible, but this is not reversible. So we wouldn't really think of this as a hidden carbonyl. We wouldn't really think of this as a hidden carbonyl because it can't be back. It can't be backed out. Okay. We can't go from this product back to the starting material over here. Let's go ahead and see what this tells us in our handout here. So we're in category one. Here's the various nucleophiles that would just attack once. So we just went over the grid yard. And you can see the mechanism is pretty simple. You start with an aldehyde or a ketone, and then the nucleophile attacks the carbonyl carbon, breaking the pi bond. Mm -hmm. We also have an extra step here with the protonation. And then there's various products we can get. If we use the grid yard, we get an alcohol. You can see what we got here was an alcohol. 